This video is either going to be the culmination of 23 years of development experience or the manifesto that they find in my cult compound in a few years, or possibly both. So we're going to talk about the hourglass. Traditionally, there are two ways the development are done. Uh, the first is to go wide. You work on everything all at the same time, and uh, you try to bring things forward consistently. This has a lot of bad side effects. Nothing is ever showable because everything is at the same completion level. Uh, the final systems integration of, uh, of your game happens incredibly late in the process. And when you cut things, you're cutting things that are quite done. You can think of this as uh, filling a swimming pool. Everything you do is only bringing the completion level up by a very small amount. And then when you cut, you're cutting things that are quite done. Often this parallelization is done in the name of efficiency. By everyone working on different things, you're staying out of each other's way. But this is also a bad thing. By everyone working on their own thing, alignment goes away. And you can end up with a whole bunch of different things that are aiming in different directions. The other way is demo driven or uh, vertical slice driven. You go incredibly narrow but deep. This does force some questions to be answered, but often that work is throwaway. Uh, it's often fake. You get these sort of core samples of your game. Uh, and if you keep working that way, if you work through these vertical slices or, uh, or core samples, you end up with something that sort of looks like a game, but nothing is really joining it together. Over the years, I've looked at this problem, and I spent a lot of time thinking about different ways to try to address it. In 2008, I wrote a deck called Do Everything Backwards uh, in an effort to try to encourage people to move away from the fill the pool style of development, which Bioware tends to favor. I also developed a process called the herringbone, which I never shared with anyone else, but the idea there being to go wide, then to go deep, go wide, then deep, as if you're building up a herringbone uh, floor. Something that I've been working on for a few years is called the pile of sand. The point of the pile of sand is to focus your effort at the center of a pile of sand and then use the formation of the pile itself to actually decide what you do. I've been working with the pile of sand for a while and the hourglass is refinement upon that, taking the lessons I've learned from doing pile of sand and reshaping that analogy into something that I think fits even better and provides even more power. So rather than going broad in the name of efficiency or bailing demo after demo with no game coming together, you just choose the single most important thing as the center of your pile of sand and then use that center as a focus to drive all the other work on the project. The primary goal is to drive this central goal to done. Anything else required to drive this to done is the next most important thing and then everything, anything required to drive that to the state you need it in is the next most important thing. As you move away from the center, the required doneness level declines. Ultimately, you should be able to, to connect all effort back to that central goal. So if you look at it this way, you have a, a, a pile of sand and you're pouring sand onto the center. And as you do so, that pile grows, naturally forming this sort of triangular conical shape and then when you're cutting content, you're cutting from the outside edges of the pile and the lost work is much smaller. Let's use a level as an example of this kind of development in action. So you're focusing on a specific part of the level. Let's just say, for sake of argument, the center of the level. And you're trying to bring that to done. But in order to bring that along, you're going to need to bring the areas around it, the parts that you can see, to something that approaches done. And then to inform that work, you're going to need to bring further circles of the level to less done, 
but you're going to need to understand them. You need to understand the, le the layout of the level. You're going to need to understand um, how big it's going to be. And then going even further, in order to build this level, you're going to need to understand perhaps the region that it exists in, the other levels that might be around it, and the architecture they may share and where they may differ. And you might need to understand the overall story of your game in order to understand the different styles and kinds of level that you're going to need. So as you can see, you need to do a fair amount of work, but while the center of that pile is brought to a very finished quality, the outer edges might be simply just a conversation that is had or a document that is written. But let's take a further refinement and talk about an hourglass. So an hourglass has that pile, that central pile, but it actually includes a neck which actually serves as that focus that focuses the flow of sand at your center. So let's look at an hourglass. Specifically, let's look at this part of an hourglass. You have a neck which focuses the sand flowing from the top to the bottom. You have the edges of the glass which constrain the movement of the sand. And then you have the sand itself at the bottom of the glass. As the sand flows down, the pile of sand on the bottom grows larger and eventually it reaches the edges of the glass. When it does so, the glass constrains it and then the pile is able to grow more quickly. In practice, the neck of the hourglass is some process that you are using in order to focus and refine the effort that's happening on your project. This might be a daily where you're looking at the game or looking at the content that you're focusing on every day and pushing it forward through that process or it could be something like a triage where you're using a common source of truth on your bug list to similarly concentrate focus on your project. So a question that might be occurring to some of you is that the neck may be serving as a bottleneck slowing down the development on your project and this can be true uh, ideally you want the flow through the neck to be the speed at which your team can do work but what i will say is you're better off having a team that is slightly slowed down all focusing in the same place as opposed to everyone seeming to be working at, at their full velocity but aiming all over the place, not working towards a common goal. So again, that neck is vitally important. That focus is vitally important. You want everyone being able to aim in a common unified direction. If your neck, if that focus isn't aiming at the most important thing on the project. It's kind of like you're taking your hourglass and you're tilting it slightly. It still works. Uh, sand is still flowing through it. Uh, a pile is still forming. Uh, it's just a bit misshapen. Now, if it's too far off, if you tilt it too far, uh, then the flow starts to become restricted and can even stop. But that takes quite a severe tilt. So while you want to focus it on something important, it's not critically important that you spend too much time making sure that it's the very, very most important thing in the project, as long as it's something relatively important to the project. So let's look at an hourglass in different phases. At first, when you first flip over an hourglass, sand starts to fall but it's actually not forming a pile yet. It's sort of bouncing all over the place. And actually the one place it doesn't seem to be collecting is in the center. This is your sort of storming part of your project. You, you don't really know where the edges are. You don't know what you need. You're, you're still focusing on trying to get something to done, but the act of doing this is causing a lot of other things to come into being. It's important to let this happen, to let the things that need to come into being come into being, but 
It's critical to make sure that you only take things as far as you need to. Keep the focus on the center and get the foundation in place enough to allow you to start building that central pile. Next, as that foundation is settled, you're able to start to see that the pile starts to form. Uh, it's a cone, but as it builds up, the edges might collapse and uh, the shape isn't fully stable, but you're starting to gain height. And this is how it should be on a project as well, is as you're trying to drive that central thing to done, you discover things, systems that you thought were good enough that serve the purpose of answering a specific question, no longer stand up to the pressure they're now under, and they collapse, and then you need to build back up again. The next phase is as the sand starts to reach the edges of the hourglass, and now the shape and constraints of your project are actually pushing back. This allows the, uh, the pile to gain height more quickly. And then eventually you reach your final state and there's your project. So an immediate question is how does this differ from a methodology like fill the pool? Well, first and foremost is that that central goal is the primary decision driver. It determines the priority of everything on the project and everything that needs to be done. Uh, not all things need to be done to the same completion level. As we talked about with uh, filling the pool is everything is done to the same level. Um, everything else should only be done as much as it needs to to support the center, to answer the questions that need to be answered or to provide the systems that are needed. If something doesn't fall inside that cone, i.e. doesn't support that central goal, then it should not be worked on. Uh, this includes new tasks, but it also includes pushing things further than they need to be pushed. Second question would be, how is it different from a demo-driven or vertical slice-driven methodology? Well, first and foremost is that in this case, everything needs to be as real as is possible. So built with real tools, supported by real systems, and replicable. The center should be chosen by what is most important to the game not by what shows best, as you might if you're driving through a demo. So I should be clear, this is not a planning tool. It's more of a philosophy about the way we think about development, about emphasizing decision-making in the game over planning. We use the most important asset we have in the game as the tool to drive our development forward, emphasizing completion over localized efficiency. And it might seem like this would mean more directional changes. And at a micro level, that is absolutely true. At the edges of the pile, because we are discovering what we need in the center as we go, we will have cha cases where we change direction around the edges and new questions need to be answered. But as you get closer and closer to the center of the pile, that sand moves around less. It's really on the surface and edges where that, uh, where that disruption happens most often. So a couple of things from practical experience. Uh, one of the things that you will find is that in game development, it can be difficult to build urgency. Uh, ways that I've built urgency in the past are things like E3 or the act of shipping or a scary executive is coming. Indeed, one of the sources of crunch is leaders using crunch as a means to generate urgency on a team that is having difficulty feeling it through other means. The hourglass provides an intense source of focus. Uh, this kind of focus through that central neck does build urgency. The problem is if you keep your effort focused on a single place, and I think you should as much as you can, then you're focusing it on a single small part of your team. And this can be very high stress. There's an old uh, Viking formation called a boar snout, which is designed to break shield walls. Uh, and it works. The problem is that the person in the front of a boar snout typically is going to die. Uh, and in a lot of ways, the tip of your pile of sand at the bottom of your hourglass is just such a boar snout. 
And this stress, this pressure, isn't just coming from above, from the cast, the sand, the the uh, scrutiny coming from the, the neck of the hourglass. It's also coming from below. Because all the focus is on that single task, on that single goal, everyone else below on the pile is pushing upwards. And so the person or group or people at the tip of your pile of sand are feeling pressure from all sides and it can become overwhelming. One place where the analogy breaks down a little bit is the individual grains of sand in your project are likely variable in size. Um, as a result, this can interfere with the reactive nature of the hourglass. If you have very large grains of sand, they may not even fit through the neck of whatever you're using as your focusing thing, whether it be a daily or a triage. Uh, first response I have to that is try to break your grains down into something small enough to fit. But even if you do, they are going to be of different sizes. Large grains hitting a pile are going to have a more disruptive impact than smaller ones. Um, but they also have more momentum. So once they're settled, they're harder to shift by other things falling on them. I don't think that variable grain size is necessarily a problem, provided you've got something that's small enough for you to deal with through your focusing lens. I've seen this effect of very large grains for things like tile sets or uh, online foundational work. Also for things that have really long lead times like the mocap and pcap processes. That can really put a damper on your ability to be highly reactive and do things entirely through this lens of a daily or of a triage. So when we first started using pile of sand, uh, I was pretty militant that everything had to be real. The problem with doing that is that when you start the process, nothing is real. So you end up flattening out that pile unnecessarily. The whole point here is to focus on the spirit of this, which is about answering the questions presented by the center of your pile of sand, and then answer the questions revealed by those earlier questions. If you are doing things that are fake, they need to be real enough to answer the question raised. If you don't do this, then you run the risk of artificially answering a question that then gets overturned later when you replace that fake system with a real one. So I think you should allow some degree of fakery, but be very careful and be very limited. One of the things I like about the hourglass as an analogy over just the pile of sand is those outer walls of the glass itself. Those represent the scope and scale of your desired project. And you can move them. You can move them in, you can move them out. Uh, if you have a very tight, small team, then you potentially have something that looks more like an egg timer with very narrow walls. In that case, you can run this process hourglass potentially for the entire length of your project because everything you're doing focused on that central core conceit is raising the quality of everything, bringing the entire game to completion because the walls of the scope of your game are very tight. If on the other hand, you have something with a very large desired scope, a very wide hourglass, then you need to think about potentially moving on to a different process once you enter into production. With very large team sizes, you need something where you can do work in parallel, especially in production. And so it's worth considering moving on to something else. Now, that might just be multiple piles of sand, but uh, I leave that to you to work on and think about what is best for your team. That being said, I've finaled projects, projects with more than 200 people, with something that looks an awful lot like this. The only difference from a daily driven hourglass is that when you're finally a project, you're using triage as that lens through which you're focusing the effort on a project. So it's not to say that it can't be done with a large team. You just need to find a way to have a lens of neck on your hourglass that has the throughput 
capable of dealing with what a team of that size is capable of producing. Okay, let's land this plane. The hourglass. You control your project by placing a focus on a single area. Then you use the issues and questions raised by this focus to do ever widening circles of work to lower completion levels. The neck of your hourglass is a process through which you focus the work you're doing, like a daily or a triage. When you first start, a pile won't immediately start to form. You need to allow that foundation to happen enough to give something for the rest of your task to sit upon. Remain aware of the bore snout, that extra pressure that is applied to people right at the center. Make sure you break up your task small enough to fit through the neck of your hourglass, but it is okay for different size tasks to exist. You can bring the sides of your hourglass in or out to give yourself more or less scope. And doing so will allow your pile to potentially grow faster or to give you a larger game. For very large teams, you may need to change processes for production. But with a wide enough or efficient enough neck, this is a process that can work for moderately sized teams all the way through. I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, please think about giving this video a like. Thank you very much.